You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, the founder of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business marketing automation, where we focus on turning digital marketing professionals into automation service providers. And in this episode, I want to take a moment and prepare your mind and inform your approach, your approach to how growth takes place in business. OK, I, you may have seen people post online about how they experienced a certain amount of success after hiring a particular person or implementing a particular strategy. And what I want to do is just take a deeper look into what goes into such rapid growth and perhaps uncover what they're not telling you, not in a malicious way, like they're trying to uh, fake you out or deceive you. But there's always more to the story. So let's look at that on this episode or let's let's cover that. Let's talk through that. But before we get started, if you're new to the podcast, first off, welcome. Thank you for tuning into the All Systems Go podcast. Do me a favor. Listen to this episode in its entirety. At the end, you'll have an invitation to leave a five star rating review and more importantly, subscribe. For those of you who have been listening and have not subscribed yet and left a five star rating and review, what are you waiting for? This is the time. I'm serious. Let this app, let the podcast continue to play. Go hit the home button out of this app. Go into where wherever you're getting your podcast, preferably Apple, because it's the biggest right now. Um, and go leave a five star rating and review for the All Systems Go podcast. It helps inform Apple that we are worth listening to. And if you're listening to it, that's proof right there that we're worth listening to. All right. So help me spread the good news, spread the word about this podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. OK, your five star ratings and reviews are greatly appreciated. So let's let's talk about this. It's it's all about business growth. Period. Right. And this is a simple formula. If you're not growing in business, you're shrinking. There, there is no standing still. There is no stagnant or dormant. You're either growing or shrinking because the competition, it, it's it, there's too much. There's too much competition. The needs of, of people in businesses, they're ari- They're rising. They're they're rising, I should say, too too rapidly. Right. So if you just stay stuck serving a particular market in one way, it's by by the process of osmosis, you become outdated. Right. And again, uh, you know, I've mentioned covid many times on the on the podcast. It has been a catalyst. Some of your outdated approaches, you were just kind of getting along. And here we have this shift in, in society that that causes you to make a new transition to to put forth new efforts that let's be honest, you should have done previously. But what you did is you sat around and you watched everybody else getting prepared, everybody else taking on these new strategies. And you said, mm, well, we've always done it this way. This has always worked for us. We're 10 years, 15 years. And some of those businesses are now struggling. I don't say that, you know, to poke fun at them. I'm, I, I, you know, I sympathize with them, but it's real. You're either growing or you're shrinking. That's it. And and it's business growth that seems to be the most uh, elusive, the most elusive element in in business, right? You just there 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 are some people who experience it at large scales and others, they, they can be in the same industry and they just seem to continually struggle. 
and ultimately fail. And there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it. Right. As much as I like formulas, uh, there are some formulas you can apply to business growth, but there is no absolute. Right. Because you're different. You're different how you structure your business. You're different how you deliver the service. Right. You're different in how you want to operate in and on your business. All of those things show up in the marketplace differently, even if you're in the same industry with the same offer. Right. You you may be more opposed to a certain style of advertising or marketing. It all matters. The personality of your business matters. So so the real question is, is, is there a secret? Was there a secret to success, Chris? Let us know. How do we achieve rapid growth? What what is it? Well, the answer is yes and no. Right. Yes, there is a secret because you need to know what to do and how to do it. That that is a a process in identifying the right minds to invest in, to help you know what to do and instruct you on how to do it. And no, no, it's there's no secret, because if at least if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that you need strong systems in place. This is not a secret. You know this. And I've detailed what those systems are. I've even given you insight on how to go about building them. Right. We've got tons of resources on the website that will walk you through these elements. So that being said, I like to look at growth with with a simple approach. Because a lot of things in business are are complicated. They, they really are. Um, so the more we can simplify, the better off we'll be. And h- here's what I'm always thinking about is what can I do that will produce the biggest result? Because I'm thinking of time and effort here. Right. Because those are those are time is finite. So it's not like I can sit around and do everything. And just do anything. Some people are. They're just trying. Every day is a new strategy. And to prevent me from doing that, I have a follow up question. What have I done that has produced the largest result thus far? And more most commonly what you'll hear is, well, what's worked in the past? Keep doing it. Well, we'll we'll see why that that necessarily doesn't work in business. OK, and and these may be be tough questions to ask and, and, and answer if you're not growth focused, because there's a good chance that you haven't been intentionally measuring the performance of your marketing and sales. Which means you haven't been making adjustments, which means without navigating by the numbers. You're, you're really. Guesstimating your way to success at best. And businesses like this. Business will not penalize you for guessing the right answer. If you guess the right answer, you will get the right result. But how do you build an empire on guesstimations and and, and finger crossing and just hope marketing? Just hope. I really hope this works. Throw it out there and let's see, especially if you've got finite funds. (laughs) Right. A lot of us just don't have those big, deep pockets to be trying everything. Okay. So what I'm proposing to you is this this question, this approach, it's really about pulling growth levers in your business. And these are these are levers uh, of different sizes at different levels of success. So you can have this. is This is where it gets dynamic. Remember, I, I would love for an absolute answer for you. But here's where it gets dynamic. You can pull the same lever in one business and it have massive results. And go into another business and do the same thing and it have minimal results. And, and and what we're seeing is the makeup of like a consultant, right, or or a marketing professional that you hire and bring in. When when a marketing professional tells you they niche, they, they have a niche audience. This means they've gotten really good at pulling a particular lever. And when they pull this lever, they can predict what's going to happen. But in order for that to take place, you have they have to highly qualify you because there's certain there's a certain state that you have to be in business for me to be able to pull this lever. And if I pull it prematurely, it won't produce it. If I pull it, you know, after the fact, when you're beyond that stage, it still won't have the same effect. Okay, so when we look at pulling these levers, 
in your business. It, it requires and, and, you know, with the podcast, we've we've got to be broad. I go as deep as I can. But, you know, these topics to do a deep dive, it really requires more of an intimate space like, you know, a, a course or a community or, you know, something more hands on workshop, things of that nature. But if we just think about it, to, to pull such a lever requires location, the ability to locate, the ability to project and or predict the ability to take action and then the ability to assess. Those are the four elements of pulling a lever. Right. So location deals with the process of identifying what to do next. What do I need to do? This is literally what most what you're going to hire a consultant for. Hey, you know, we're, we're experiencing some growth. I just I just can't figure out how to get over the hump. What should I be doing? And they come in and say, OK, well, look, then projection. This is an intelligent estimation of what you can expect from your efforts. And this estimation should be founded on baseline statistics data. OK, if you're not measuring your marketing, you're you're there's no consultant that's going to be able to come in and, 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 and save the day. You need data. So the first step may be just to collect some baseline data before you can even identify a lever, a lever. Action is the work required. This is the actual pulling of the lever. What is that? What what is, what does that require time wise, human resources wise, technology wise? Right. And then assessment is you determine how well things worked or not. So you can make your adjustment. So you'll hear this going forward. And, and I, I wanted to record this because I, I talked about it on a previous episode with Karanda, where we were talking about what was that lever? What was that thing that you did that just resulted in massive growth? So you'll hear this as a, a, a theme going forward as I bring on other entrepreneurs, CEOs and things of that nature uh, to detail. What was that single lever they feel led to the biggest growth in their business? And, and as you're listening to these answers, I also want you to pay attention to what stage was their business in. Your, levers are contextual, right? They're, they're not just. Uh, floating in the air they're they're posted somewhere on some wall in some room right i'm 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 thinking of this uh this is more uh th- th- it's not like a physical room of, of your business but you, you you get what i'm saying this is an analogy it's figurative speech but there's context to a lever when you pull it why did that work why did that work for you because the blind mind will go and say hey well look Look at the lever they pulled. Uh, They started promoting. Let's start promoting. And then when you don't get that same result, you look at this tactic like it was something wrong with it or, or perhaps the person. And it's important to be able to listen and look beyond the surface of the success stories and identify the mechanics behind the success. I'll help you do it in the way that I ask questions, which is another reason why shameless plug you all should be sending your your favorite tool the the ceos and the the c-level folks of your favorite tools to refer them to be a guest on the podcast so we can have this conversation and i can guide i can ask these questions to really extract some of those mechanics for you all there's somebody experiencing a lot of a high level of success let them know hey you should really go on this podcast i think it'd be please right automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. Okay. But when, when you're training your ear to listen and look beyond the surface, when you're, when you're hearing or reading these success stories, you, you, I want you to know that there are different levers for different levels of success in business. So some of the more popular basic levers are updating your website and or landing page, right? That's that's a basic one. You, you, you have to pull that one, right? Start accepting payments online. Is, is, it, is that even optional nowadays, right? I, I don't think that's even optional. It's not, this is not a, um, do you accept payments online? Yes or no? There is no no option anymore. It's just yes, and it better be yes. Advertising on social media, right? Targeting a new audience. Hey, you know, I um, think I want to shift to um, young, 
young young men who are just out of college, aspirationally looking for that next leadership role in their community, whatever the case is. Right. Doing manual prospective outreach. Maybe that's a level you just say, hey, look, let's go old school. Let's do some some LinkedIn in mail, <laughs> scrub some lists. Let's, you know, let, let's just pound the pavement. You know, I understand landing pages. I understand all of that. Let's just get on the phone. Let's send some cold emails. Right. Start start content marketing, blogging, writing articles, guest guest posting a podcast. These are all it doesn't. You know, it's you could talk, you could sit down and talk to any business owner and they would be aware of these things. Now, if you ask them how to do it and are they doing it themselves, that's a different question. That's a whole nother story. And then your most basic marketing professional will at least know these from just from an academic approach to marketing. You, you can enroll in enough courses and read enough blog posts to know all of these levers now. Here's here's the next step, though, because remember, there's four elements. You have to be able to do all of them proficiently to be qualified as a a highly sought after marketing professional or automation service provider. You you need to not only be able to say, hey, uh, you need to update your website, but you also need to be able to project what updating that website will do for them. You know, we see that websites like yours in your industry have an average conversion rate of three percent. And based on your traffic, you'll be able to properly project uh, up to 100 new leads per week, which is about 400 a month. And based on your current conversion rate, that's about three to five new clients just by updating your website. This is what an experienced consultant should be able to tell you. This is what I mean when I say projecting. They've identified the lever, update your website. Now they're projecting, setting a, a realistic expectation based on historical data of what you can expect. But all of that's fine and dandy because who's going to do the work? Who's going to do that? <laughs> OK, I'm sold. Where? Who, show me. Point me. Who, who do I sign up with? Who, who does this? Right. So then the work is done and then there's assessment. All right. You said I would have about three to four more clients this month. Let me see. It's been 30 days. Do I? Oh, I've got five. Hmm. And then what are you going to do? You're going to go back and, and figure out why did that work so well? What were the elements there? Right. And, and again, I mentioned a few. It's not comprehensive. Right. But these are pretty standard. And doing any of the above will produce some form of result like anything that I mentioned updating your website payments online advertising on social a new audience uh, outreach pers- manual or perspective outreach content marketing they're all produce some form of result and no it's not it's not a com- again it's not a comprehensive list but it does show some fundamental areas of business that that you should have shored up okay and and to be honest, this is a consultant's dream because you, you don't have to when when it's when it's these fundamental levers that need to be pulled, you know, like the foundation that needs to be laid. They just come into a business and do the basics. They know the basics you need in place to implement the basic growth happens. The success story is posted and then it leaves all of these other business owners in awe. like, wow, when they updated their website, look what happened. Unfortunately, without understanding that those same levers won't produce the same results for your business, that's where most people fall short with false expectations. Right. They're like, well, they updated their website. We're going to get the same person to update ours and then you update yours you don't get the same result that's not how it works it, just imagine if it were that easy what who wouldn't be successful in business there's other elements you're at different stages perhaps you already pulled that lever w- which brings me to an, an analogy when we we talk about the repeat <laughs> pulling of levers um and and just follow me here. Uh, th- this is not. Th- let me just say it. <laughs> uh, this is the first one that came to mind. So, uh, you, you know, the reason why drugs are so addictive is because the addict 
is always chasing that first high. You know, they've they've gone. It's a scientific. It's physio- physiological. Uh, there's something that happens when those elements enter your body for the first time. That's really where the word high came from. You experience this level of euphoria and 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 stimulation your first time that you that 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 person will never achieve again ever. It's the highest that it will ever be. And they spend their life chasing what can never be caught. Chasing some to the grave. Some finally realize, you know what? It, it I've got to stop this or it's going to stop me. Right. And levers are the same way. You can't keep pulling the same one, expecting the same results. That, that's that's actually insanity. <laughs> right. Because the, the, the first time may not be the best. Right. Like you may pull it. It's got some results. And as you keep pulling it, there's a time where you're like, man, this is really working. Wow. And guess what happens over time? Those results become more normalized in your business. I'm talking about in your business. So if you're stuck, you've got one. They call it the one trick pony, right? Hey, this is all we do and we do it well. You're just pulling the lever. (laughs) I wake up, I go into my office and I pull the lever. Look at my shoulders. I'm just pulling my lever. Right. One trick pony. And that could work for a time. Right. And again, the first time you do it may not be the biggest result. But as you continue to do it, it grows and grows, but it reaches some plateau. Right. And here you are, you keep pulling and you're like, come on, produce, produce, produce. And there's a shift in the market. Right. There's there's more competition in the market. Technology has evolved. So that what you once was were getting out of that lever, you'll never get again. You'll never get it again. You cannot launch a product the same way every time for years and expect the same results. You're changing things. I guarantee you, you are. Talk to anybody who's done at least five to 10 product launches and they have changed. Oh, well, this launch, what we changed was this, you know, like some of the core elements stayed the same. But they say, OK, for this one, we went international for this one. We, we decided that we were going to go uh, 10 days on Facebook instead of seven uh, on this one. We, we did Zoom rooms. Right. You'll see that within that that main strategy or main lever that they're pulling, there's like these sub levers, <laughs> you know, that they're saying, OK, this one is working. So we're not going to stop pulling it, but we need to switch some things up in in, in between. Right. But you don't want to be that one trick pony. You don't want to be that person that has one lever to pull and that's it. Because, again, once it has produced what it's going to produce, it's not going to produce anything more. Business is too dynamic. So as as you as your business grows, you need to identify the new levers to pull to produce the growth that you desire. And, and, and again, the lever that you pull that produces a result, it will always more than likely produce some result. So I'm not by any means telling you to, to not pull them. Right. This is where, this is where my, my analogy breaks down from, from the drug addict because the addict needs to stop, (laughs) right? Stop that behavior in business. No, you, you keep it up, but you just don't rely on it. You you understand what I'm saying? You're pulling the same lever, but your expectation is informed that, you know what? This is good, but I need to go find other levers. And those who are able to go and identify those new levers to pull are the ones that continue that that uh, achieve continual growth. One model, one model that works really well in this approach is once you identify a lever that needs to be pulled repeatedly, um, This is what automation is for. (laughs) Literally, you build a system so that it's continually pulling that lever because you don't want to leave any money on the ground. You don't want to leave any you know, you don't want to leave any lever unattended. So you put systems in place to just keep pulling it for you. Now it's not your effort. 
right? And if it does plateau, it's fine because you're off to the next lever. And what are you going to do? You're going to identify it. You're going to put a system around it so that it can continue to continually pull it. And now you see the 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 automation orchestra. You're you are, you know, you're you've got your you're orchestrating the 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 choir or the band and you're just putting moving your hands in the air and all of these tools. Right. All of these systems. And it's a beautiful sound. You're just hearing click, pull, click, click, click. <laughs> right. That that's that's the business owners orchestra. It's not the violins and the flutes and all of these beautiful instruments. It's it's the hearing the the clicks, click, 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 click. Like that's our orchestra. And we get excited over that because we know these systems are just pulling for us. Pull, 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 pull. Right. And as your business grows, the need to identify those levers. Right. Grows new levers. But guess what? They get harder to locate and harder to pull. Because they're smaller and they're smaller, I should say. So, for instance, building a Web page, the slash landing page, hooking up an autoresponder, sending out emails, follow up emails, getting getting your system set up. Those are all big levers. Right. But scaling from one million to five million or or five hundred, let's say uh, four hundred and fifty thousand to five million or ten million. Those are going to require different levers. Remember, growth requires new levers. If you want, if you just want to say, hey, look, I'm at a particular level of business. I'm, I'm making three hundred thousand and it's fine. It's a, a nice little simple lifestyle business. I'm country living, but I'm living like a king and a queen. And I just pull these three levers. Right. If that's you just know again, at some point you're going to have to adjust a bit. Those levers will work, but you'll have to adjust. But if you're trying to grow continually scale, we talk about scale all the time. And and me, I, when I think of scale, I'm thinking of in the millions. Right. Same systems apply to smaller businesses and enterprises, though. But when we talk about that type of scaling, levers are different. They're not as easily located or acted upon. In fact, the level of acumen of, of your marketing professional that you're working with has to be extremely high to guide you to its location for one, and then extra instruct you on the necessary action to take. Right. And, and here's what I mean. Uh, it, well, I say it's it, the, the dynamic that I've seen is the earlier in business you are, the larger the levers are, but the smaller the result. Right. And and I say result. Comparatively, because at in the moment, those results are big to you because you've never got them. You've never had those results. But as you grow, you'll look back and be like, man, I remember the day when I thought five thousand dollars a month was a lot of money. It was for you at the time. But as growth ensues, you look back and say, hmm. That was cute. <laughs> right. like Man, wow. We've come a long way. Right. So. Those 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 early early in business, those those big ones, you know, uh, they're, they're easier to find. And and as you grow again, you know, they're 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 smaller and they're harder. So for me, you, you, you have to have somebody that understands like, OK, you've done this, you've done that. You've done this. OK, a checkbox, all of those levers. We need to first off, make sure there's systems in place to keep those levers, to keep pulling them. But the growth happens in these new ones. Right. So, you know, the larger the lever in the in the beginning, the smaller the result. And then as you grow, the results will grow as well. But the levers are smaller. That just means they're harder to locate and they don't they don't take. A, a quantity of effort. They take more of a quality of effort. OK, and and here's what I mean for a more established business. You know, you can see major profits from having a copywriter update a sales page. 
right? You you can literally, I've seen this. I've seen people pay copywriters up to $30,000 to write copy for a sales page. And it turns out after it's all said and done, it ends up producing half a million, a million, right? But you getting started out, you don't you dare. Don't you dare think that just getting started out, you can go pay the top top dollar copywriter and they come in write copy and you're just going to make all this money. It doesn't work like that, because remember, and the copywriter will tell you because you have to meet their qualifications. Hey, look, I, you want to pull this copywriter lever. All right. This is what you need in place. Once all of this is in place, I'm going to pull this lever. And guess what this lever is going to do? It's going to produce this. Right. But it that's only for an established business. A, a, another thing, an established business may do something as simple as an online scheduler to increase their client acquisition. Starting out, don't expect it. That's a, that that lever. It's a good lever. But where you're at in business, it's empty. You pull it. You hear nothing. There's no click. <laughs> There's no nothing. You're like, hey, this doesn't work. Yes, it does. Just not for where you're at. So now we're starting to see when someone says, hey, I hire so and so and we 10 X our revenue. Think about the state that business was in and the lever that was pulled and just know if they want to 10 X their new revenue, it's not going to be from that lever. Right. What got you here won't take you there. You're not <laughs> the lever that you pulled to 10 X your revenue this year. Is not going to 10 X your revenue next year. It's that's just not how it works. You have your outliers that say, hey, look, man, speak for yourself. I pulled it three times and I'm 30 X in now. OK, but don't bank on it. Do not bank on it. You're not going to get the same amount of growth. From pulling the same lever repeatedly, it will produce results. But we're talking about growth. You're not going to get the same level of growth. So when someone says, hey, I got this, I did this, I enrolled in this program and got that. That's fine. They pulled a lever and it worked. Guess what? They're now to 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 grow again. They're going because because this lever, this growth lever now has become the foundation. It's become standard, standard operating. Hey, look, this is what we do. We pull these levers and we make ten thousand. Now I want to make 20,000. It's not pull the lever faster. <laughs> it's not that right. We need to identify the next lever to pull. So again, back to my analogy with the attic, you pull that lever. It's produced what it's given you. It's growth. You've got it. The lever has given you that amount of growth. Now, if you want more growth, you're not going to be able to get it from that. Stop chasing it. You've got to identify new levers. And they're not as easily identifiable the bigger your business gets. When it when it when we when we're talking about millions on the line, you know, one of my favorite levers is segmentation. And and, and the beautiful thing is segmentation works across any business of all sizes. But the big businesses. Oh, oh my goodness. Money in the bank. Right. So smaller people are like, well, I don't really need that. I got a couple lists and a few tags and those are my segments. And I'm like, good for you. You don't understand this segmentation lever. If I pull it in a bigger business, it produces millions in your business, some leads, some, you know, some revenue. Right. But I know that I'm familiar with various types of levers for various types of businesses and various types of stages. And I guess as I as I close on this podcast, the the effort here was to inform you, uh, those of you who are running your businesses, you're the chief EOs is what I call them, the true chiefs of your business. You're not in the operations or, or anything like that. You need to understand that the person that you're assessing to do your marketing needs to know beyond the basics. It needs to know some of you need the basic stuff in place. You put all those basic levers in place and systems around them and you'll start producing some revenue. And for some of you, that's the 10K that you're waiting on, just having the foundation in place and systems around it. But now when we talk about growth. Growth, well, we're, we're putting a number 
in front of that letter X, 1X, 10X, 2X, 3X, 4X, right? Those are new levers. And you need, you need, you need a consultant that can identify those levers. How, how can one identify what, what they've never done? Right. They, they need results. They, 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 you, they need to, to show that, oh, I've pulled this lever. Look at this. And, and then it also helps shape your expectation. Because if somebody, let's say their lever is uh, messenger marketing, so uh, they do messenger bots and this, this and that. Understand the finite nature of that lever. Do not do not expect for them to build out your entire customer journey. You're paying them for that lever. That's what experts get paid for. One one lever. I'll come in and do this. Maybe maybe a few more. But there's one thing that I'm really good at. And I'm going to put this lever in your business and I'm going to put a system around how to pull it. And when we pull it, you're, you're on to the next level. OK, don't settle. What, what's the next lever lever? Right. So the game of growth is an ongoing effort of strategizing what to do. That's the location piece. Estimating the return. That's the projection piece. Right. Detailing how to do it. That's the action and measuring it, measuring its success. That's the assessment. And you re you rinse and repeat for the next lever for the next level of growth. OK, so if you've been stuck, you just can't seem to 2x again. It's like in the beginning, we it felt like every year, 3x, 5x. One year we even had 10x and we just kind of plateaued. There's there's new levers, new levers. And it's and it's going to take a highly skilled individual which be ready to pay that highly skilled individual to locate them, instruct how to pull them in to build a system around the continual execution of those levers for the continual growth of your business. So I hope that gave you some context and what you'll be hearing going forward and just understand the growth journey. Um, remember, if you're not growing, you're shrinking. If you're not living, you're dying. OK, that this is just the reality with your business. OK, it's either producing or not. And as you continue to hear uh, the interviews and some of my business buddies and people I respect in the field and the CEOs that you all will be referring and, and you hear me ask about the lever, what lever did you pull? Just listen to it. It's going to be gold in these podcasts, everybody. I'm, I'm intentional. I know I know the transformation I want to produce for you. All right. So so who needs to hear it? Who who is that person be, besides you that has reached a plateau? They've they've had some amazing years behind them. They've worked with people. And just because they're no longer working with those people who got them their 10x or 5x growth has nothing bad. It's nothing against that person. It's just their business needs something else. They need a new 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 professional, new expert to come in and identify other levers. Because for me, I'm systems, operational systems across your business from lead all the way to customer to beyond. I know those levers. HR, I'm out of my, listen, I don't know. Levers for finance. I don't know. <laughs> right. So I'm good for the areas that I'm good for. And you need to be able to say, OK, I worked with this person. They put these levers in place. We grew 10x, 5x, 3x. All right. Next. You, you see what I'm saying? This is the realistic approach to growth and investing in your business and yourself. Last thing I'll say, we're talking about who needs to hear this. That person who just won't get they they're too nervous to get uncomfortable and invest in themselves and or their business to go to the next level. They're either comfortable with the revenue that they're making right now. Maybe they're comfortable with their job and setup, and they don't really have that catalyst to push them forward and say, you know what? I got it. It's now or never. They they're scared to go pull a new lever. And what I found is that it's not always about the money that they don't have. It's the it's them walking into who they truly will become. It could be overwhelming. It's a it's a it's mental mess that they haven't worked through because it's just like, man, can I do that? Am I that good? Do I deserve that? And it goes beyond, you know, just the technical acumen. 
So who needs to hear it? Just think about the people who are comfortable or, you know, if they're comfortable where they're at um, or the people who have been putting forth so much effort. You've seen them hire agency after agency, marketing consultant after marketing consultant, and it just doesn't seem to work. Share this episode with them. Let them know this may be the missing key. I'm, I'm being honest. This may be what they were missing. All right. And if you found value in today's episode, please share it on your social channels and make sure you you subscribe and leave a five star rating and review. This is the time where I extend my invitation to you, new listener. Now is the time to subscribe. You, what you just listened to, there's 60 plus more in in the queue. And depending on when you listen to this, there may be 60 more ahead. <laughs> so long story short, there's more than enough where this came from. So jump on in, subscribe every Thursday. We release a new episode and your five star ratings and reviews are greatly appreciated in Apple um, here at Automation Bridge. We're dedicated to training digital marketing professionals to become automation service providers. These are when we talk about levers. These are people who are proficient in installing automated systems for your marketing and sales to begin to help you achieve massive scale and growth. But it doesn't end there. We touch every operational area of your business with automation. That's what an automation service provider does. And businesses are in dire need of these people. OK, to, to, to they know how to deploy these automated systems for rapid growth. So if you'd like to become an automation service provider, if when you listen to these podcasts, it just resonates on a different level. You see things you, you can see it. You can visualize it and, you know, you'll be great at it if also. If you're an ex, if you're an expert in the space and your clients systems are more fine tuned than your own, this is a perfect place and opportunity for you to get those systems in place. What you need is help and accountability while you're doing your client work to ensure that your systems are in place. OK, too often uh, we see what is it? The cobbler <laughs> has everyone else has shoes, but but their children uh, I don't want that to be you. So if you're looking to establish a career in, in marketing in automated marketing, I highly recommend you become an automation service provider. If you're already in the space uh, providing that service at a high level, you know, you're 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 an expert. You're at the top tier and you know you need systems in place yourself and they can be improved if you're the only one that's built your systems. I highly recommend that you also look at becoming an automation service provider so you can get those systems in place. And just by doing that, you're going to witness the ability to increase your capability to scale immediately. It's just what it is. So um, if that's you, if that's you, automationbridge.com forward slash ASP, automationbridge.com forward slash ASP, someone Myself or someone on my team will assess all of all of the information that you provide. And if we say, look, this is a good fit. Come on in. <laughs> we have a program and a certification specifically for you, only for those who qualify. So make sure you go to automationbridge.com forward slash ASP. Uh, fill out your information and let us know. Hey, look, I'm ready to become an automation service provider. Uh, lastly, for those of you who need help. You're listening to this and you're like, look, I get it. Who's going to do it for me? <laughs> Show me the way. Who who are these people? Where do I find them? We have a jobs board. OK, automationbridge.com forward slash jobs. You'll be able to submit your request, detail your your need as much as possible, and we will do our best to connect you with a trusted resource in the space to build out your systems for you. So that link is automationbridge.com forward slash jobs. All of the links will be of and resources mentioned will be in the show notes at automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. You can subscribe there and listen to all other episodes at your leisure. So until next time, I see you online. Automate responsibly, my friends. <laughs>